they said that I was going to die at the age of two. Nothing happened. At the age of four, nothing happened. And then, when I was about seven, the rest is history. Christopher was diagnosed with thanatophoric dysplasia type 2. It means death-bearing. The condition in and of itself already has a death sentence with it. I am 24 years old. My the oldest cousin in the world with my condition. My dwarfism doesn't define me. I have 375,000 followers on Instagram. This is how I fly to the police. Camila Gomez, John Cena, J-Lo, Mark Anthony. I got it on the location of my phone. I opened it. This is the defining moment. I'm just going to give you a yogurt. Remember, I need assistance with everything. Whether it's eating, taking a shower, brushing my teeth, going to the bathroom. I am too familiar. His condition is worse and worse every day. He was driving and he fell down and we had to go to the doctor. I was pronounced dead. I think that he I was, think. yes. That happened nine months ago. When I was a year and a half, I got pneumonia. They did the tracheostomy and then they diagnosed me as genitopoic dysplasia type 2. Here is when he was four years old. The doctor say he's going to die. That was very hard. And we say we have to do a big, big party because he's going to die. Every single year after that, we go to the same doctor and we love it in his face <laughs> that I'm still alive. I am 24 years old. His chest is very tiny for his organs inside. One lung totally doesn't work. When the machine beep, I know that he needs oxygen fast, but when the machine don't beep, he told me, mommy, I need suction. It's because he feel that the mucus coming. The doctor showed me how I had to do it. The first time, that was very, very scary. I just can't disconnect here. When he, I do this, oh my God. But with the time you use it, I learned how to suction him at a really young age, since like seven years old. The first time I suctioned him, I was definitely scared because we were in a moving vehicle. My mom was driving and he needed suction right away and there was nowhere to stop. Definitely has prepared me for everything that's happened since. And it made her a better applicant for medical school. Christopher's condition has definitely molded my path. Because of him, I am going into the medical field. Journalism has been a very important part of his life. I know that he always wanted to be a journalist. Another interest of his is looking for celebrities. The first time I became famous, just because my Instagram numbers started to go up, this is the day four months after the World Cup of 2014 happened. That day, Christopher took a picture with Thomas Rodriguez, the number one player in the Columbia team. The star player goes to me on his social media. My phone just starts blowing up out of nowhere. When I drag some memories, that takes a lot of dedication. I need to know everything, every single step they take. Billy Irish was a hard one. We just got lucky. We followed a car to a tattoo place. And there was literally half the city waiting outside the place. She came out, she loved her friend. I got my picture, we said, it was, a, it was a cool moment. Lil Nas X, he had just won a VMA award, so he was in a good mood. I got to the, to the location. She greeted were nice enough to let me in and wait for him to come out. We were able to chat. We were able to sing a little bit. Yeah, he was really, really nice. My celebrity stalking skills helped me with my journalism. I only applied to three schools. I wanted to show my family that I could do it, but deep down, I had my doubts too. And I got an email. I opened it, and it's Columbia. It's Columbia. This is the defining moment. I got my bachelor's degree from journalism. I'm a top-line resident, and 
Mas bate de caia que não me tinha que ficar junto com o seu Foi uma sorte, né? Eu vi o crédito foi para vários mais malgos. Eu fiz, lá que eu fiz, mas peixe. I am very, very proud of my son Christopher when he was like 10, 11 years. I never think that he go to the college. But after that, he did the maestria, and I am very, very proud of him. When I go outside, a lot of people want to know how we try him. It used to be an everyday day. He come to the park. Every day we had to do this. To see him smiling, laughing, that's everything. I don't need more. Yeah, that's good. I make many people. My dream was to be a sports journalist and a general writing and other journalism. It's just to be able to tell stories of immigrants that make our New York City the diversity that it is. Being a disabled member of the community, it's not easy to change the narrative, but obviously, there's always gotta be a first time. There's always a first time for everything. At first, I was not expected to live past the age of three days old. I become a disability influencer. Today, guys, I have some exciting news. I am newly Miss Wheelchair Delaware. I would like to inspire others just by me living my life. All set up. Gandalf. <laughs> My name is Talisha. I'm 28 years old and I have muscular dystrophy. Um, I'm disabled. Recently, I've become a disability influencer. I am a YouTuber. The name of my channel is Rolling Through Life with Talisha. Hi, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel, Rolling Through Life with Talisha. So I have three children. Um, two of which are twins. I met my husband, Quentin, in college, my junior year. The reason that I was attracted to her was due to her positive energy spirit and her, and her courage. I have congenital muscular dystrophy. I was born with it as it's a genetic disorder. So that pretty much means my muscles are weak and so I'm not able to walk. Um, at all, I have no muscle tone. So it's caused me to be wheelchair bound, um, basically since birth. At first, I was not expected to live past the age of three days old, then followed by three months old, so I'm 28 years old now. The reason I decided to start my YouTube channel is to sort of highlight the abilities that people with disabilities have. Even though we are disabled, we live normal lives. Ready? Mm-hmm. Towards your, um, towards this side. You look excellent in this one. Check, check, one, two, check, check. All right. Hi, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel, Rolling Through Life with Talisha. Today, guys, I have some exciting news. I am um, newly Miss Wheelchair Delaware. Um, it's basically a pageant for wheelchair-bound women who are looking to take over the world. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Until next time, it's a wrap. There you go. Oh yeah, would you want to take a picture? Let me know when you're ready. And you're shot already. No, I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Ready? Yeah. Three, two. That's a good shot. Okay. Oh yeah, there you go. Is that good? Yeah. You sure? Should I take another one? This photo is a recent photo of when I was crowned Miss Wheelchair Delaware. 
I feel as though it was a great opportunity to showcase what it means to be a woman on wheels, as I like to say, um, but still powerful and elegant um, and sort of promote inclusivity in the disability community. You ready? You can sit up close. Not too close. Gordon, come on, join in. Hit. Okay. No, no. Good job. Help. Help. We have experienced prejudice about our relationship, mainly because I am not able to walk and he can. Stir. Okay. Good job. So a lot of times, being disabled, it could be like hard to cook, but when you have teamwork, it works out. Mm -hmm. There you go. Come on, guys. I know, but guess what? Your fork belongs right here, okay? Right, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. What inspired me to write a book about being a disabled parent is simply my children. So one day they are going to ask me, Mommy, why are you in a wheelchair? That is an inevitable question that's going to be asked. I've always enjoyed writing, so I thought what better way to explain it than in a book. Her book and her YouTube channel are very inspiring and they basically help others see things within different light. Since publishing this book, the reaction has been nothing short of amazing. Honestly, though she's in a wheelchair, she never acts as if she is in a wheelchair. And she always proves others wrong when they doubt her. So when people realize that, wow, she's amazing, I'll say, yeah, she is amazing. I would like to inspire others just by me living my life. Everything is possible. There's nothing impossible, um, even though it might be done differently. People call me the man or the delays, and I love it. <laughs> Carry them all over whenever he needs me. The doctors told my mom and dad they wouldn't live past the age of two. He's putting himself out there. Can't tell you how proud we are of him. I don't see my life hard. I see challenges and I need help with things, but I feel that we all need help with things sometimes. Hello, hello. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. All right, Marty. All right. You ready? I'm ready. My name is Marty Zidi. I am 33 years old. I was born with a rare condition that makes my legs look like a pair of scissors. I was born with two really rare medical conditions called arthrogryposis and prune belly syndrome. I had club feet, swelly outsets, dislocated hips, and club hands when I was born. People call me scissorlades. My hips are dislocated out of socket, and that's what allows my legs to look like a pair of scissors. We never sat at the table for <laughs> <any> breakfast. <laughs> this is false advertising. <laughs> Thank you. Want some ketchup? No, I'm good. Salt, pepper? Nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. See you later. See you. Later. One time we was in Chicago and uh, Marty was walking cross-legged and the doctor looked at him and said, "Oh my God, what is he doing? How's he walking like that?" And we said, "I don't know. He just started doing it. He just crossed his legs and he started walking around and he was mobile." So the doctor was like, "Oh my God, I've never seen this before." So he called all the head doctors out and they peeked, all peeked out the door and they were looking. You gotta see this kid, you gotta see this kid. Look at how he's moving. If I try to walk straight later, I walk really slow, I had no balance, and I walked like a penguin. <laughs> but then, when I talked to the legs, 
I can rock and I have like awesome mobility. I learned how to do that on my own to benefit my mobility. If I toss my legs, I have this amazing balance. And the doctors just said keep doing it because if you try to collect your legs and fit them the right way, you won't have the mobility that you have now. I have laid braces to help me walk more stable. I weigh 60 pounds and I'm 4 foot 10. So being little and the weight does affect me lifting some things. I don't see my light hard. I see challenges and I need help with things, but I feel that we all need help with things sometimes. So I don't see that as a blockage or a limitation. The doctors told my mom and dad that I wouldn't live past the age of two. We took them everywhere. We did everything. There wasn't any, a, a weekend that didn't go by when we had the opportunity to go somewhere and do it, we did it. My parents are the whole reason I'm able to fully succeed. Do them up. Carry them all over whenever you need them. That's the benefit of being 60 pounds. Yep, 60 pounder. Go to the hockey games, take them up all the stairs all the way down. People are looking like, what the hell is that guy doing? We experienced a lot of looks, you know, at Marty, but um, we always let Marty go out and do yeah, his thing. You know, we didn't hold him back. I try to tell almost everybody uh, at least a little bit about why I have what I have. I run a nonprofit organization called the Project Sizzadit Foundation. By traveling around, meeting other families, I'm trying to raise awareness for people like me as much as possible. He's got so many friends now, and they all love him, and I call him my walk-in saint. Can you help me put this in the back seat? Yeah. Sure. We're on our way to another person that also they post it. His name is Brian. We're on our way to his house in Newport. And I'm extremely excited about meeting Brian. I can't wait. It's gonna be flipping wonderful. Hey, what's up, Brian? Hey, dude. How are you? How you been, man? It's a day. Long time no see. Hey, Everyone with arthritis is affected differently. My hands are affected the most. My hips are affected, and my feet. Hi, how are you? My fiance had told me about Marty. Me and Marty started talking, and then he finally came over, and we met, and we just hit it off. Hi. To be able to be selfless and just want to help others, you know, it takes a special person. <laughs> and then we'll go fast down the road, though. He puts people ahead of him, and I think that he's doing what he was meant to do. <laughs> Re! Re! <laughs> it is. <laughs> Me. Thank you for the wheelchair ride. That was amazing. I'll charge you next time. Yeah, <laughs> charge you next time. <laughs> we just feel blessed. Yeah, well, it's just a blessing. Well, I can't even. But I, It'll make me cry. Uh, I <laughs> can't. Okay. Proud is like for a parent. It's overwhelming and fulfilled <laughs> into my heart. I mean, <laughs> he makes my heart happy. Any disability, I feel and I'm seeing that people with disabilities, if you join the community, it empowers you more. When you're able to touch someone's life, it does something that money or any material thing cannot buy. It's my purpose, and I'm just taking every action and every step to follow it.
I was born with an extremely rare genetic skin condition. It makes my skin extremely fragile. Too much pressure, friction, physical activity can cause my skin to break down, blister and shear. Doctors thought I wasn't gonna live till I was five because I had so much skin missing on my body. In 2018, I was diagnosed with skin cancer and that was the big tipping point. I had an epiphany, I feel like. There's so many things that are just like waiting for me and I'm just not doing anything about it. I was just existing and not living. I was born with epidermolysis bullosa, an extremely rare genetic connective tissue disease that causes my skin to spontaneously and chronically break down. They use the term butterfly skin because our skin is so delicate. It's compared by doctors to be as delicate as the skin on a butterfly's wing. People can hurt me and not even know it. EB affects my day-to-day -day and every facet you can imagine. I wake up and I have to check my body for any possible infections or blisters. Blisters especially because if I don't get them, they can get bigger. It's a arduous, strenuous task of three hour bandage changes for every four days, or depending on how many wounds I have on my body. It can be every day I need a bath. Currently, I only really bathe once every four days because I have to keep my wounds wrapped in their environment for them to heal. Doctors thought I wasn't gonna live till I was five because I had so much skin missing on my body. I made it to five years old. And then they were like, well, he's not gonna live till he's 26. And I made it to 26. So I kind of just stopped listening to doctors. I lost my ability to walk when I was about 12. I had gotten some really bad wounds on the calves of my feet. It made my feet into like ballerina feet. All of my fingers are actually all dislocated. All of my finger sockets have dystrophied and calcified. I went online because I could take control of an avatar that isn't disabled. In 2018, I was diagnosed with skin cancer and that was the big tipping point. I had three operations on my elbow and then I had some skin cancer removed on my right foot. Yeah, I had an epiphany, I feel like. There's so many things that are just like waiting for me and I'm just not doing anything about it. I was just existing and not living. I started talking on TikTok, just telling the world everything that I felt and thought. Um, I did one big TikTok video that took off. It got me up to a good thousand followers. Now I'm sitting pretty comfortably at 22.8K followers. It's usually like just a vlog. I have my own little introduction. When I do a vlog update, I'll be like, hello, my kings, my queens, and my everything in betweens. Hello, my kings, my queens, and my everything in betweens. And I do my little wink. People love the wink. I get a lot of warm, heartfelt comments like you make every day better and I had a lot of people reach out to me and tell me that I've really changed their lives. It feels like my whole life has just been like trying to figure out how to get control of this skin condition. Now that I've finally gotten control of it all, I can now move on and kind of plan out the rest of my life now that I've got a, a hold on my skin. It's like been learning how to adult. I've been going out a lot more thanks to my friend Sean. Hey, Mama? Yeah? Uh, can you help me get ready to go out? I think I'll wear my uh, leather jacket. I just need to button this cup. Perfect. I'm meeting my friends for some burgers at Ocean Beach. My mom is my hero. She's been there for me since day one. There's just so many words I have from my mom that so much love and respect. She's been through every single nightmare. She's a wonder woman. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up, dude? How are you? Just chilling, man. What you got? Got some ho dads. Oh, man. Cheers. Cheers. I've known Jeremiah for about a year now. I'll never forget in meeting him for the first time. It really put a lot of things into perspective. Uh, that's a burger. EB doesn't have a day off. I hear you're enrolled in the classes. Yeah, last year I was seeing my social worker almost like every other month and he asked me, do you want to sign up for online classes? And I was like, yeah, what do you got? There was a nursing program and then he scrolled down to the bottom and there's video and audio production. I was like, boom, 
that's it. I start February 7th, 2022, and I graduate February 2nd, 2024. Awesome. That kid, he's fearless. That condition isn't easy for anybody. Being the warrior that he is and not letting his condition slow him down a little bit, that was really powerful to see. EB hasn't stopped me. My pain hasn't stopped me. I'm still alive. The pain will pass. It's not the end of the world. It does feel good to be able to reach the, the milestones and the limitations that doctors have put on me. It makes me feel unstoppable. So my arms and my leg can't move. They were all convinced that I was gonna pass away very, very early. I started watching TikToks. I was apprehensive, but then I was just like, I'm just gonna post it. I don't want people feeling bad that I'm disabled. I don't want people to cry because they see me or think I'm inspiring just for simply existing. I'm using my stylus on the phone and my phone is connected through Bluetooth to my computer and it all works together. My name is Lauren, I'm 19 and I have arthrogryposis. Basically, it means that I have contractor joints and no skeletal muscle below my neck. So my arms and my leg can't move. Um, I can't, like I can't walk, I can't write. I can do basically everything with my mouth or like my chin. I need help with everything. Like if I wanna get out of bed, I need help. If I wanna get dressed, I need help. I took a shower this morning, someone had to help me. And most times it's either my grandma or my mom. Actually 100% of the time it's my grandma or my mom. Six weeks before she was born, they realized that she wasn't moving. Her heartbeat was strong, but she wasn't moving. She struggled after she was born. They were all convinced that I was gonna pass away very, very early first. We were given the diagnosis of maybe six months. It just set a, everybody into a depression. Mom and dad just were so fearful. After she was born, when she was off of the ventilator, I looked in her eyes and she was so alert. And I'm like, you show them what you got. I'm a sophomore in college right now. Um, I'm studying mass communications and I'm gonna get a minor in social media. Ever since I was like little, like probably 14, I wanted to like do social media. Like I just always knew I wanted to do that. So I started making YouTube videos really as a joke. And then they kind of did a, a little bit well. They would get like 250 views. But then TikTok came out and I was like, I wanna post TikToks. And then one of them blew up and got like a million likes. And now I have like 42,000 followers. A lot of people will like message me and be like, thank you for like joking about this because it makes me feel better about my disability. I started posting videos in February of this year. Mostly I try to be funny. One time somebody called me a vegetable. This person was like, can you even reproduce? And I was basically like, first of all, that's rude and offensive. Second of all, who are you to ask me that? And third of all, even if I can't, why should I care? You know what I mean? You doing anything today? Yeah, I'm probably gonna go to the park with Peyton and Trey and we might film a TikTok. I drive the wheelchair with this joystick using my chin or my cheek, just whichever is more convenient. So I think for me, I don't want people pitying me. I don't want people feeling bad that I'm disabled. I don't want people to cry because they see me or think I'm inspiring just for simply existing. My friends are probably the most important thing to me. My favorite thing about Lauren is she, she pushes me outside of my comfort zone a lot. She's really grown into herself and not really relied on what other people say or think and just kind of going with her own feelings, her own gut. I think Lauren's TikTok videos are very funny. She's very inspiring. She's very true to herself. I'm very proud that she's doing so well with TikTok and her YouTube and everything like that. So I'm really glad that she took the leap of faith and went ahead and did it because it's working out for her. It's four minutes in. Yeah. Can I show you I'm guys surprised I got so the timing as well as I did. Can you redo it? I look bad. Can you redo it? I look terrible. Oh, I, I look so gross. Alright, this is your last tape. Who are you? Look, 
No, So, are you excited to post this video? Yes. Literally every time I'm like, that's gonna flop, and then it doesn't, and I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Now I post it. I'm gonna post it on my Snapchat. I guess I want people to know that if they are also disabled, like that's okay. They don't need to feel bad about it. They aren't an inconvenience to their parents. People love them regardless. I think using my platform to help others with disabilities feel like they can have a voice too. And it's okay to just step out of your comfort zone and do things.